Tales of Berseria is an action RPG developed by Bandai Namco, released on the PS3, PS4 and PC. It tells the story of Velvet Crow and her quest for revenge against her former mentor for killing her little brother. It's edgy, it's gruesome, it's different, and was commercially successful mainly because of those same reasons. So today, we're gonna take a look into 10 things you probably didn't know about the darkest tales in the series. Number 10. Making up for a fiasco. Tales of Berseria was originally developed for the PlayStation 3, and although that version stayed in Japan, it was planned to be a part of the JRPG resurgence of the last decade. Several titles were already on that same system, such as Tales of Exilia 1 and 2, Tales of Graces F, and of course Tales of Zestiria. However, the latter had received a few controversies before and during its release, but the most important aspect of it all was that it had been a commercial failure. It was released for the PS3, later ported to PS4 and Steam. Even though Zestiria sold over a million units worldwide in all platforms combined, it took years for it to recover from its initial backlash, a backlash that still goes on today among fans. Zestiria had been greatly criticized for its wrongfully advertised main heroine, its cliched protagonists, and its convoluted battle system. Mixed reviews were there despite still having a lot of fans. Bandai Namco resented this because this was criticism that was also coming from their homeland, Japan. They knew they really needed to make up for their mistakes, so the next Tales games definitely had to be different. Way different. For starters, they got rid of the classic cheerful and young male protagonist fighting for justice and friendship. Instead, we got a dark and edgy female lead fighting for revenge. Yup, the exact opposite. We also saw a revamped battle system which was greatly improved. Berseria was a success upon release and yeah, I'd say it definitely made up for the Zestiria fiasco. Number 9. Reboot There are a lot of changes in this game within its development and within its gameplay. It was directed by one random dude called Yoshimasa Tanaka. He worked on Tales of Symphonia, but other than that, it's like he came out of nowhere. Most Tales games were produced by Hideo Baba, that's right. Even Zestiria, not Berseria. This one was now produced by Yasuhiro Fukaya. He was mostly known for working in the quality assurance department for many, many Namco games, but he was also the producer for the remake of Tales of Hearts on the PS Vita and even an assistant producer on Zestiria. Berseria was his second major Tales game to get in charge of everything. Music was done by Motoi Sakuraba as usual and the character design as usual too by Kosuke Fujishima and Mutsumi Inomata. And the script was handled by legendary Naoki Yamamoto who had previously worked on the script of Tales of Exilia 1 and 2. Why then was Tales of Berseria so different than other Tales games? First, because of what I said before, they wanted to wash their hands off of the Tales of Zestiria failure and start brand new with fresh ideas. They knew they had something, technically speaking, with Zestiria, but just didn't know quite well how to implement it properly. It all changed with the genius of Hukaya, who wanted to take the game into a different direction. In other words, and according to the interviews with Fukaya himself, Bandai Namco wanted to start a new era for the series, starting with Berseria. And what better way to impress people than to create one of the most controversial characters in the series as the protagonist. Number 8. Velvet's, um, unique design. Velvet is without a doubt the soul and core of Tales of Berseria, and by far one of the most outstanding characters in the series, mainly for the obvious reasons of being dark, edgy, and the anti-hero type of character, but also because of her clothes. The controversy with her is far from revolving around her personality. Lead characters with such traits have been seen before in other video games, even in JRPGs, just not in the Tales series, and definitely not dressed like that. For this video I read several interviews with the producer and even one with the designers, I also watched a few videos with them too. What baffles me the most is that whenever the interviewer asked the producer Fukaya about Velvet's design, he'd always give a really vague answer. Velvet used to be a kind, usual girl who lives in a small village that takes care of her family, but after some accident she unfortunately got demon powers, these plot points provided to the character design. We wanted her experience from the plot to create her outfit. Ha. Huh. 
I'm sorry, but that doesn't justify her revealing outfit. It may justify the rags, of course, just not the sexualization. I think they give these types of answers because they simply do not have to justify it. It's fan service. Everyone knows it. Most JRPG fans love it. So why will they need to explain it? But then again, why wouldn't they just say, we dressed her like that just because we wanted her to look sexy as hell, period. I'm not the biggest fan of her costume, but not because it's too sexy, but just because I feel it just doesn't fit her personality at all. The same thing happened with Mila Maxwell on Tales of Exilia. Her outfit just doesn't say anything about her personality, and it just doesn't match. But Mila became a hugely popular female character among Tales fans worldwide. Velvet's success is partially thanks to this, but we'll get to that later. Now, contrary to people's belief, she wasn't censored. She was planned to be censored, though, to show less skin, but her design was left intact, thankfully. Nonetheless, there was indeed some other censorship involved with the game. Number 7. Censorship Bandai Namco of America censored only one, yes, only one scene in the entire game for its Western release. And nope, this isn't a spoiler, it happens almost at the beginning, so it's fine. When Artorius kills Velvet's little brother, Laffy said, he performs a weird magical ritual where we see him die very dramatically, still with some blades. In the original version, though, Artorius merely pierces Laffy said with his sword. It's just as impactful, to be honest, but the Western scene was more dramatic, more over the top, more exaggerated. I guess an adult stabbing a little kid was bad enough for Western audiences. Because of this scene, according to Namco of America, the game would have gotten a mature rating. Yep, just for that. So they changed it for the scene we already know and sometime later even apologized for doing it. Not that the apology served any purpose whatsoever, but hey, at least they admitted it. Number 6. No More Namco Tales Studio The first game in the series, Tales of Fantasia, was developed by Wolf Team, spearheaded by Yoshiharu Gotanda. After some issues with Namco, Gotanda left and created Triace to develop a similar game to compete against his own game, Star Ocean. Long story short, Namco acquired the Wolf Team as a subsidiary and members of the team will go on to create Namco Tales Studio, obviously as a team to specifically work on the Tales games. The problem, however, was that Telenet was a shareholder of Wolf Team, so therefore they struck a deal with Bandai Namco to cash in on the Tales series, hence why Gotanda and others left. Many Tales games were developed under the name of Wolf Team until 2003, when it was renamed Namco Tales Studio. Five years later, Telenet filed for bankruptcy, and finally Namco had all the rights to continue with the Tales IP as its own shareholder. When Tales of Exilia was published, the subsidiary was completely absorbed by Namco and the studio pretty much merged with the main staff of Bandai Namco. If you've played most Tales games prior to Exilia 2 and then jump into either Sestiria or Berseria, you'll notice the differences in terms of gameplay and battle mechanics. Now you know what happened on that regard, but we've yet to see why these changes were done. Number 5. Brand New Combat I already told you that combat in Tales of Sestiria was criticized. In a way, it had been done that way because new people, new programmers were working on it now. Bandai Namco really took notice of the complaints and decided to change the battle mechanics once again. Berseria had now a combat called the Liberation LMBS. LMBS stands for Linear Motion Battle System, used in every title so far but with small variations. Liberation LMBS was no small variation though, the game had several changes made to it, enough to be called something else entirely. It felt more like a beat-em-up where creating combos was the focus of fighting, with rules and penalties like the Soul Gauge, which is some kind of power force used by characters. The more they perform combos, the faster it depletes and attacks can be either easily avoided or deflected by the enemy. I think it's a great battle system. It also had now free camera movement and you could move around, especially to pick up the souls left by the enemies to recharge the gauge. But why was it made like this? 
Well, according to the producer Yasuhiro Fuyeke, it was because they thought it would appeal to a bigger audience. They felt previous Tales games had more complex battle mechanics and were harder, and this one was much easier to understand and get into. Creating combos and manipulating the order led to the game having simpler controls, but the Soul Gauge feature was added in a very smart way to prevent the game from being too easy. Number 4. The Irrelevant Connection to Tales of Zestiria It is widely known that Berseria is a prequel to Zestiria, but it is so in the same ambiguous way Symphonia is to Fantasia. They just take place in the same universe, but that's about it. Some things like the Seraphim or the Malachim's origins are explained here, but it's set 1000 years before Zestiria, so the connection is quite vague, almost not important. In fact, the only purpose it serves is to get people curious about both games and play them around the same time or simultaneously maybe. The truth is, they only made this connection to Zestiria as a marketing strategy to try and get more people to play and forgive Zestiria, to give it another chance. Why else will they connect a new game to another one that failed in reviews? Didn't they say they wanted to start over a new era for Tales and make up for the Zestiria fiasco before? But that's also why the connection to Zestiria was left as something almost irrelevant. You don't have to play one game to understand the other, perhaps they wanted to leave the option to the player to indulge in the small tidbits of the lore of both games as something inconsequential plot-wise. Number 3. The Berserk Controversy The name Berseria stems from the name Berserker, warriors with uncontrollable personalities and power. Because the theme of the game also revolves around a character in search for vengeance against a master that killed someone precious to them, and the name Berserker as well, Tales of Berseria has been constantly compared to the manga and anime series Berserk. Both stories share even more things in common, like the Scarlet Knight, or how Artorius gained his powers, similar to Griffith in Berserk, or several trivial nicknames like Broken Bird, or even the name of the world itself, Midgand, instead of Midland. More references are there in Berseria, but I don't want to give out major spoilers. Developers have never said anything about it, perhaps because no one has asked them about it. It may just be a fan theory, but with too many coincidences, I'd say, perhaps the writer Naoki Yamamoto is a fan of Berserk? It could be that behind the curtains, Tales of Berseria was merely inspired by Berserk. But like I said, it's just a fan theory, and sadly, it was formulated mainly thanks to the game's haters. Number 2. The Mila Maxwell Pressure Remember when I mentioned that Mila Maxwell became a very popular character worldwide? Something you probably didn't know is that Velvet probably wouldn't exist if not for Mila's success. The reason why the developers decided to go for a sole female protagonist for the first time ever in the series was precisely because of Mila's fans. I won't spoil Exilia for you, but let's just say that most of its fans, myself included, can clearly see that the majority of the story revolves around Mila. Jude, the other main character in Exilia, acts more of a sidekick most of the time, and he's just kinda there in the lead. In my opinion, Mila is the sole protagonist of Exilia, and it does feel that way to fans around the world, even in Japan, and that's what fans loved about Mila so much. Developers noticed this and were surprised to see two things, the popularity of the character and the demand for another female lead in the series. So they took notice of these demands, and it was decided that the next two games, Exilia 2 and Zestiria, will have ANOTHER MALE PROTAGONIST! Yeah, fans were disappointed, no matter how cool Ludger was in Exilia 2, leaving Mila as some secondary character didn't feel right, but that's a story for another time. Then the Alicia controversy happened, trailers showed her as the main lead of the game, but nope, she wasn't, another story for another time. So the developers finally agreed to go back to the Mila Maxwell formula, because now she was even more popular, so they decided to plan their next Tales game with a female lead in mind. The result was Velvet Crow. Number 1. Tales of Millionaire I think some of you probably already know that this game was a commercial success worldwide. It was released on PS3 only in Japan and it sold decently. What you see on the PS4 and PC is actually a port, pretty much reworked to the standards of the new generation. The downside is that no matter how awesome it looks on those systems, you can still easily tell it's a PS3 game. 
Well, that didn't affect the game's sales, fortunately. Across all three platforms, Tales of Berseria has sold 2 million copies worldwide. It is now the third most commercially successful Tales game ever made, behind Tales of Vesperia and Tales of Symphonia. It may not sound as interesting to you, but let me tell you this. The previous Tales game, Sisteria, sold half of that, and it wasn't critically successful. Exilia 2 did much better in reviews, but it only sold 500,000 copies around the world. Compared to other Tales games, it wasn't commercially successful. What do you think would have happened if Berseria had failed as well? That's right, this game was a big deal, crucial to the company and most importantly, like the developer said, a new era for the Tales series. Tales of Berseria is honestly a masterpiece among my all-time favorite Tales games, and it's awesome to know that it was a huge commercial success, probably saved the series from financial issues. It is indeed easy to get into, but with enough challenge to keep all types of players entertained. I hope to get one day another Tales as dark, unique, and, well, different like Berseria. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and share this video with your friends. See you next time!